Hello everybody, this is Justin from KQS, and today I will be reviewing the PlayStation 4. It's really crazy how far we've come in console design. This thing has a little bit bigger footprint than a super slim PS3, though if you look at the PS4 from the side, it kind of looks like an eraser. It looks cool, but it kind of makes plugging in the HDMI cable a little weird sometimes. It has all the nice things that Sony's done for a while. Built-in power supply, two USB ports in which some USB sticks won't be able to fit. This is a HDMI only system. That's made it difficult for recording things until now. One touch I really like is the camera port in the back. Um, I'll show off the camera in just one sec. It's got a slot loading Blu-ray drive, capacitor buttons, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. In which last gen that was more than you needed, but this time it's kind of changed for the worse. Each disc you buy has to have the whole game loaded onto the hard drive. It's almost like a PC. Almost. The disc is there mostly for authorizing the game to play on that PS4. So space-wise, it will pretty much install the whole thing. And you thought 8GB was bad in GTA 5. Try an entire Blu-ray. It usually gets around 23 gigs, plus updates. Battlefield 4 and COD Ghosts have literally taken 100 gigs of the 500 gig hard drive. But, like the PS3, you can absolutely upgrade the hard drive. I think now at the moment its max is about 1.5 terabytes, and that's something more like it. This new console is a powerhouse compared to the PS3. Before it was really difficult to program, plus you really didn't have that much RAM. Now the PS4 is built for devs to make the best games possible. You can actually stand up the console just like the PS3, vertically. Just remember to buy a stand, because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of unnecessary vibration and fan noise. In your new PS3, you get a very nice and awesome DualShock 4. It's basically the DualShock 3, but it feels even better in your hands. The L2 and R2 buttons are now proper triggers this time. It's got a clickable touchpad and a light bar. Yeah, those aren't exactly used in most games, but it's some nice features to include. They offer more creativity than just rumble triggers. The other bigger innovation is the dedicated share button, in which you can capture screenshots or video or even stream to your Twitch channel. And on the back of the controller, the material they use is really nice. It really helps grip the controller and it makes it even more comfortable. It is hands down the best controller of this generation. Now is the time to talk about the camera. And here it is. It only takes a little bit of space in front of your TV. Unlike the Kinect, which is huge, it can shoot 720p video, though it's not like the Kinect 2.0 that actually shoots full 1080p, but its real design is for the motion detection with the light bar on the DS4 and the brand new Project Morpheus. Not to mention the Move. Yeah, seriously, the Move is back and PS4 ready. Though, sadly, you can't really use any PS3 controllers. Okay, yeah, I know it's kind of good to move on, but when you have something that uses USB, and it still has the same Bluetooth radios. Even normal Bluetooth headsets don't work anymore. And to be honest, the lack of compatibility is a little disappointing. When you first start up the PS4, you're greeted to this nice blue UI. On the bottom, you have all these nice big icons of games and apps. When you click on the games, you get a whole bunch of info on what trophies you've earned, what other friends have played that game, and even links that open up in the web browser. It's all pretty self-explanatory. The apps on your left are your most recent. Uh, one thing I'm not really too crazy with is how it handles the media apps like Netflix and Hulu, etc. It tosses them all into one big media folder, and I have no problem with folders. Just don't clutter it with apps that I haven't downloaded yet. Going up to the top tab, puts a very similar XMB style settings menu with all the important stuff. Messages, downloads, 
your system settings and other notifications. And navigating through everything is very simple. It's easy and it's pretty relaxing with that background music. Your PlayStation profile is expanding in a lot of ways. You can add even more from your Facebook. You've always been able to share trophies on your newsfeed, but you can actually use your profile picture as your PSN picture. And for all your friends who don't want to see Swag Master 420 XX69, they can send a request for your full name. And the nice thing is that you actually have to ask permission for the name, so it's kind of a good way to see who your close friends are. If you've used the PS3 or even the web store, you'll be right at home with the PS4 store. I've never had any trouble navigating. Everything is separated very well in categories, and even a nice option to see is what's new with the week. Plus, you get to see all the deals, and if you can't find what you're looking for, just simply use the search bar, and as you type, results will fill in. And before buying a game, most of the time, it'll have plenty of screenshots and videos to make sure you made the right choice. Also, do be sure to have a PlayStation Plus account. Not only do you get free games with it, but the PS4 does charge for online, just like Xbox Live. The cool thing about the next-gen consoles is the ability to use a second screen. PS4 uses an app for your phone or tablet, and it's really handy. I generally use it to reply to messages, see who's online, but the beauty is actually using it in games. It's really the coolest thing to play Ground Zeroes using the iDroid app. Having your entire map, calling in helicopters is extremely useful, and it shows a bit of what you can do with the second screen. The big thing about the PS4 is the ability to share gameplay, and it's all done with the push of a button. It's really easy to capture everything from screenshots, video, or even live streaming, especially live streaming. All you have to do is enter your Twitch account information, and you're good to go. As for screenshots, you basically get everything in the resolution you chose. And with video, you'll be able to upload directly to YouTube and Facebook. But in all honesty, the video I uploaded to my personal Facebook really didn't look that great compared to using my Elgato. Which makes me very happy to announce that they've turned off the HDCP, so I can finally get footage in the best quality possible. Since this is a Sony system, the PS4 does a great job at media. Sony does have its own video and music services and that are just fine, I just don't really use them. But it's got all kinds of other media apps. All the important ones. Netflix, Crackle, Hulu, Amazon, HBO Go. Plus it's got other apps like the IGN and the WWE Network. Though sadly it's kind of missing a couple features that would make it perfect for media. There is no YouTube app, MP3 support, and the ability to use it as a media server, which even the PS3 is capable of. The hard thing about early adopting is the initial lack of games, but there actually is a pretty good amount to choose from. I mean, you got your COD, your Battlefield, Metal Gear, and most third-party games are probably the best on the PS4. Most of them. But with PlayStation Plus, PS4 got some really good free games day one. Resogun and Mercenary Kings plus others. And there's tons of indie games like Octodad. And it's one of the many strengths of the PlayStation 4 is its selection of games. PlayStation 4 literally has something for everybody. The PS4 is an amazing system. They designed everything from the ground up to make and play great games. It's a good media hub, though it does lack a couple features that its older brother has. It constantly gets better with every update. The free games you get with PlayStation Plus from day one, a nice inviting interface, great indies, superior performing third-party games most of the time, great exclusives, 
a great innovative future with Project Morpheus. $400 is a much better price to pay than the crazy prices of last gen. That all makes the PS4 the top selling console for good reason, and gets my full recommendation. Okay, that's the end of the review. I hope you all enjoyed it. Just subscribe for more reviews and randomness. Again, this is Justin from KQS, and until we meet again, comrades.